Hey everyone, it's me, Joe Creator. I've changed hotels today so I can be a little bit closer to the train station because I'm gonna be using it soon to try and go to um, Nanjing. I'm about to go and have some dinner now. I think I found somewhere that I want to go. So I thought I'd bring you guys with me. You can see what I eat. Maybe we can have a little chat and uh, tell you what I think of it. So yeah, see you in a sec. Is it eager in? Oh, so yeah. to, to yeah. 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 I to have Lao Wang Ji. So a slight problem, I have a foreign phone number, right? So when I scan the app using Alipay, it takes it to, to the menu so you can order. My foreign phone number doesn't work. Yeah. So luckily I can yeah. went to order on the screen with the help of Fu Wu and now everything's ordered and I just scanned at the at the till. So it's okay, but it's a slight difficulty about, you know, being a foreigner here without having a Chinese phone number. Now I'm a big fan of uh, La Wang Ji. I'm also a big fan now of Chinese soup. I never order a soup in the UK. I'd never do it, I'd always have something else. Everywhere I go, it's like, you just have soup with stuff. Like, soup is not a cause like it is in Europe, where you have soup as a cause. It's just like, oh, have some soup as well. Yes, yeah. Like, spread it out, yeah? Okay, yeah. Mmm, it tastes like peanut butter noodles, right? Definitely tonight I just wanted to find somewhere to like fill the hole in my stomach. Something quick, and I can just have something that fills me up. So this is doing the job. So the lady wanted me to try the wonton dumplings. So uh, yeah, they're coming out too. She's so nice. But I'm also spending more money. Just yeah. Okay, let's try these. They also have like the peanut butter sauce on them. Why is everything with peanut butter? How true, how true. Go, go, go. Later. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye. That was interesting. Peanut butter sauce with everything. And that means like the noodles got a little bit sticky and dry after you like mopped up all the sauce. We had the soup to sort of counterbalance that. And it was a pretty hearty meal. Especially when that lady, she convinced me to have the uh, dumplings, right? And they were good. They were good actually. I'm glad that she said to order those because they rounded the meal off and now I'm massively full. Yeah, that was dinner. A little bit of a struggle because I couldn't use the QR code menu to order, but we got past that. Now I am satiated. I think back to the hotel room now and I'll see you guys uh, pretty shortly with something else in Shanghai. Bye-bye. Tomorrow. So today I'm gonna go check out make sure that I can get the train tomorrow because I think as a foreigner I have to go and like verify my identity for my train tickets before I do that and uh, So I've got a little bit of time just to pop to the train station I'm gonna do that make sure I'm ready for the trip tomorrow. Okay, so here I am coming up to Shanghai Shanghai Jam. Pretty busy here today though. Maybe there'll be a queue <laughs> Well, the man said, I said, well, my ticket's for tomorrow, but it says I need to do some identity verification. He just looked at me and just went, come back tomorrow and scan your passport. I guess identity verified? I'm going to be turning up quite early, I think, in preparation for things going slightly wrong and people not knowing uh, what to do about me. <laughs> I've got somewhere to go. I've got places to be. So I'll see you then. Obviously, like, you know, come from the UK, so you have the full English breakfast, right? That's it, that's standard. Then you have maybe stuff on some toast, you have eggs on toast, stuff like that. And this is like breakfast food. But what is breakfast food in China? Because they just seem to eat the same thing, like, all day. Yeah, hi, hi. Yeah, yeah. We got a uh, new roll, new, new roll, eager. Yes, yeah. I just say new roll because I don't know what half the other stuff says. It's going to take me too long to uh, decide. <laughs> so uh, new roll it is because that's the first thing that I saw that I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Let's see if it's any good. Okay. Not quite as meat filled as on the advertisement. It's like a supermarket sandwich when they put all of the um, all of the filling at the front so you can see it looks good and at the back there's nothing. Mm. I think there would definitely be places where this would be better. This area is uh, pretty quiet. 
It's like the quietest area that I've been to in a while and it's nice. So I could have taken a taxi. I didn't really want to because I feel like exploring by foot is much more exciting. You get to see more things, you see more people, you learn more stuff. So yeah, we're walking it. Oh, he has a little baby. Okay, so yeah, this is the Jade Buddha Temple. So it says built in 1918 to 1928. It's just after the First World War this was constructed. I guess makes it pretty modern. Temple style in the south of Yangtze River. I'm looking forward to see what it looks like inside. So it has that feeling again of being not in the middle of Shanghai anymore. Just the way that everything's built the way that when you come in here it gets a lot quieter you can hear more birds and stuff obviously there's still a big skyscraper sort of looming up there but yeah just the little birds and the feeling of something more peaceful you know you have people being respectful and making wishes i guess and stuff like on the tree right it's very beautiful with all these tags sort of hanging around everywhere they're also on the um, roof here this talks about these copper lamp structures which are in the temple and how they were sort of specially made with some love and care and special copper. And then here at the bottom, it says plant a good seed, cultivate a good society. So it says here that the merits of the pledge of, to this statue, increasing one's lifespan, not to come to harm, blessed with fortune and wisdom, enjoying high mobility, wealth and fortune. If you pledge donations, you will be comforted and people will be able to enjoy the benefits of the donation. Their careers will flourish and their official fortunes will be prosperous. So I believe this says that the Buddha statue brings you know, wealth, uh, prosperity, high mobility, good fortune um, and protection from harm. Uh, I think it specifically says water, fire, poison and weapons. So here goes nothing. I wish I had a bit of uh, change a bit of money to donate to the pot there but unfortunately I don't have any <laughs> so I can't do that I actually think I just overheard some uh, like a tour guide say in English that this is built by the uh, country's largest Buddhist institution built by maybe run by so uh, yeah they uphold this Buddhist temple. I wondered why it smelt so strongly of incense here. I think that explains it. So everybody's burning their incense and putting it into this fire. My guess is it's along with a wish because they were putting some bits of paper in there that they wrote on. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is what I've got. No, I failed. Some people would definitely like it. It's not a bad drink, but it's not my style. Well, I bought it, so I'm going to drink some of it. Maybe I'll get more used to it. <laughs> That was really cool. I'm glad I found that little temple. Going inside, it was very spiritual. The feeling was so different to anywhere else I've been in China so far. Very, very peaceful and respectful. And then like, as soon as you walk back out on the street again, people are just bustling, hurrying around again and all that sort of stuff. It was definitely different seeing people slow down, pray, and pray for a sort of fortune. Yeah, it was really, really interesting. I'm not like completely sure on the customs for that temple, I guess, but I wanted to try, be respectful as possible, and also sort of give my prayers to the temple. So I gave it a go as best I can. Hopefully I didn't offend anybody, <laughs> but I just wanted to try my best. Okay, tell us your name. Tobias. Gao Yue. Gao Yue is your Gao Chinese name. Uh, Gao, Yue. Gao Yue. Yeah. Okay, and you've just been playing indoors. What's the name of your band? My band is called Sweet and Friends. And we yeah. were playing at? Heyday Club in Shanghai. And it has been amazing. I hope you enjoy watching the clips of it. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of the set in a minute. He's got to go back on stage, so I'm not going to keep this going any longer. See you later. See
So I just returned for my first ever jazz bar experience in Shanghai, watching Sweet and Friends, Tobias, I hope I said that right, I hope I remembered it correctly, but that was just, how good was that? I mean, everybody in the band, everybody playing together was just perfect. Big shout out to the Iranian bass player who actually lives in Belgium, he comes from Belgium, and uh, he flew in six days ago from Belgium to come and play out in Shanghai and other areas in China. So uh, he's seriously suffering from jet lag and everything and he's still up there. His bass solo that he did was really, really good and he played so well. And all of them played really well together. Just the vibe and the atmosphere there was so warm, welcoming. Everybody there was really, really friendly. They had a great drinks menu. They were serving some food. Just such a positive, vibe and atmosphere and that's something that I think that's different from anything I've experienced before in like UK and stuff just the vibe and the atmosphere in there was different very very pleasant and very positive and lovely so yeah really really enjoyed that thank you Tobias and the whole band for uh, playing that night and making it a beautiful lovely experience to watch and now I'm gonna go to bed because I'm knackered. Tomorrow we're getting the train to Nanjing. Thank you for watching this little segment and I will see you next time. Zetian!